Hello, welcome to the Blessed Workshop. My name is Ken Henderson, and I'm so excited that you're here today because I'm going to show you the fence I built for my table saw. So last video, we built this whole flip top cart, uh, table saw on this side, we flip it over and there will be, uh, next video, we'll be installing the router, but there will be a router. So this flips over, becomes a table saw and a router, but it needed a fence. I couldn't use the same fence that came with this Ryobi cordless 10 inch table saw. So I needed to make a um, fence for it, but I didn't want it just clamping on to the sides here. I wanted it to not be nice, uh, have a nice ride to it, slide and be square uh, at all times, as square as it could be, and to have a way of measuring without measuring on the wood. So that's what I've done. So it's very modular, it pulls off, you can put it back on, it's gonna be able, so you can flip it over and do the, the router, but I'm gonna show you how it all goes together. So the first thing we do is pull up the side wings, just like that. All right, so we get the full extended workbench. Um, that's gonna give us plenty of room to do all kinds of cutting jobs. Um, even sheet goods, uh, especially once I get an infeed table built, an infeed helper here built, and an outfeed off the back of it. So the next part is the rail, the track. So I've got the track, bring it in. The track is on a piece of oak, one by three trim, and some dowels. You can see all these dowels are fitting up with these holes that I put on here. So. I've waxed these dowels up best I can. It lines up somewhat. Just have to knock it in, just like that. Not too bad. It just goes right up. All right. And what that does is also um, straighten everything out. Makes it nice and stable. These wings are really strong now. Nothing's gonna come down. This is all oak. Uh, this is all oak. You can see I've got an aluminum angle here on the front of it. it comes all the way down and measurement. Um, and then the, so the next way, I mean the next piece of this is we take our fence that I made and put it up here. All right, so here's, here's the fence. Um, it has a kind of a cleat design. If you, th if you know what a French cleat is, there's basically this 23 degree angle off the back of it here. And it's going to sit inside here where there's another angle so that it has a nice good place to grip and won't slide when you grip it down with this uh, toggle clamp that's on the end of it here. And there's a track down the middle of it and then on the, on the end is a stop to hold it on the back side of the table. Um, it's a little heavy, but I that's fine. It's made out of um, CDF. And um, so I just eat, ease it off the back there, slide it into place so you've got a little bit of play in it. And uh, you just slide it to where you want. I can put it here at six inches and clamp it down. It doesn't move. So clamp it down, it nice and solid. Um, I can tighten this up a little bit if I need to. I have that T-track down here. I've got the T-track here on the side. I can put my feather boards. Um, it's all very nice. I can move it, pull it up, slide it down. I can bring it all the way down comfortably. I wouldn't bring it down any further than 42 inches is about where I can stop it. And that's where it sits. So 42 inches, I can get a 42 inch wide in here, uh, cutting some off. It slides fairly easy all the way down here. Here's where the majority of the cutting will be done. All 
right, so that's pretty much it. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it has every feature that a normal table saw fence has. I will be, at a later video, building a micro adjuster that will go off the back of this. I've already got it all planned out. Um, and we'll have a digital um, readout on it so that I can adjust it and be able to put stops in it. Um, but that will be coming after we get the router installed. Um, and it will also have a micro adjusting fence on it uh, using the same concept. But that's it. I hope you enjoy the build and I'll uh, take a look at it now. Ooh. One. one of the features that I put in here was, this is a magnifying cursor. I took a, um, basically a magnifying um, piece for like magnifying for books, reading books, and I cut it down to two inches to fit down inside here so that you can get magnification on the, on the edge that's in there. I can slide it down, you can see it move. So you can see that's the real size of it. And it magnifies it quite, quite a bit. Uh, so that makes it really nice, uh, especially when you're getting older like me. Uh, but you can see all the, uh, all the uh, adjustments in there, or all the measurements in there. And it locks down nice and straight. You can see how the toggle clamp works. Just locks it down in there. You can also see from the edge here how that fits in place there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, just determine the length of this board right here. So this is because this is a flip top, having a fence on this that goes past these two points uh, posed a little bit of an issue. So my solution is that I'm going to take this one by three oak. And we're going to, this is part of the modular system that's going to be part of the whole system. But we're going to drill some holes, three, um, seven eighth inch holes every six inches into the worktop and through this one by three piece of oak. And we're going to connect it with dowels. Um, it might be friction connection or magnet, depending on. What, what happens, I mean, we're going to try it out and see which one works. Um, but so this will give a face for the fence to ride all the way from the blade to the end of this wing over here. Um, so that is, you know, that's a good, here on my, my rule here, that's a good 40 something inches. So I could easily get a, my, my goal is to easily get a piece of uh, four by eight plywood up on this and to be able to cut it down. Um, and so I'm gonna make it the full length of the worktop all the way seven and a half feet long. So I should easily be able to cut whatever I need off of a sheet good with this, especially once I get the outfeed shelf off the back of it, um, which would help tremendously. Um, I'm checked to make sure we're still, there's a little bit of the nick right there, but let's make sure we're still pretty good as far as catching. Everything seems to be pretty good. So that's going to be my first step. I'm going to take this piece of one by three, attach it to the front of the flip cart and then drill holes, seven eighth inch holes, starting in the center and working my way out to each end every six inches. Um, the trick is to be good, it's gonna be to get them consistently, accurately six inches all the way out from the center out on each side. And then that way we'll insert some dowels into this, glue them to the one point, uh, sorry, glue them to the one, one by three piece of oak 
uh, inside and then we'll be able to remove it from the work cart like that. So we'll be able to remove the whole fence system um, off of that, set it aside, flip it over when I want to use the router. So we start out by actually drilling in these 7 8 inch holes so that the dowel will uh, sit inside there. So we're going to do these 6 inches apart all the way down the side rail here. And I'll just take my Forstner bit and drill them out. Uh, there's several of them all the way down the length of the whole table, including the fold out side wings that you see here. And we'll just continue this all the way down. It really wasn't too difficult. I thought it might be a little more difficult than it was, but it really wasn't. It worked out really well. Um, that Forstner bit did a good job. And, uh, you know, I did uh, mark on my bisc there how deep I needed to go, which was uh, two inches about, as I put it in and drilled them in. So I went all the way down on each side. and. Uh, I held that board in place with clamps as I went down along the way. And as I went along, I did put the pieces of dowel that I had uh, in holes to make sure that they fit. And, and then I came back afterward with my trim router and Put a little cham chamfer bit, a uh, chamfer around the, each hole so that the dowels would fit inside there. And you can see I rounded off the dowels and put some paste wax on, carnauba paste wax on the dowels uh, so they slip in inside, slip in those holes easier. And I take this one by four piece of oak that's going to act as the bottom of the track for the fence, and I'm going to glue that to that one by three piece of oak that has the dowels glued into it. Uh, and this is gonna form the uh, foundation for the, for the raft, for the rail or the track. So I just glue it in place and tack it in with some, some uh, nails and clamp it up, let it, uh, let it set overnight and it was nice. All right, so now I'm getting ready to uh, put that 20, 23, 26 inch, I forget what it was. Yeah, we're gonna see it here. 26 inch bevel, uh, I'm sorry, 26 degree bevel uh, along that piece of oak that's going to be glued to the top of that one by four. And this will act as the, the bevel that holds the French cleat type uh, action that I'm gonna put on the T-square for the fence. So that, that bevel will be glued down in place. And I think that one's about four, almost five feet, I think it's five, actually five or six feet. And so I just spread some glue along it and put it in place, flip it over, clamp it down. And then I put some screws in from the bottom. I want that to really stay in place. So I put screws about every six inches all the way down. And then I take my piece of uh, aluminum. This is a two inch by two inch, or one, actually one and a half inch by one and a half inch uh, piece of aluminum uh, angle. And I take some, I, I use some contact cement uh, on the inside of that angle and on the outside of the rail and it worked really well. It's not gonna move. I just placed that angle down on, on there and clamped it into place and it held really nice. I didn't even have to screw it or anything. All right, so then I'm taking my MDF. I said it right this time. I'm taking my MDF and I am uh, cutting the pieces that I'm going to need for that. Basically, I'm going to form a square tube for the in inside part of the fence. And then I'll have my sides of my fence uh, that'll be uh, a little higher. So basically I have a square, it's a square tube that I'm going to glue together. Real nice. 
the glue oozing out. Clamp it all up. And once I have it clamped in place, I'll let it dry. Now MDF, when you add glue to it, it really becomes really strong. It's just a matter of gluing the sides together in sequence. Clamp it up, let it set. And then continue. Flip it over, put the top on, glue it in place. Right. And then clamp it up. All right, so once I have it all clamped and dried and set up, I uh, make sure I got everything even. There was a couple of spots where it was not quite even, so I ran it back through. You know, I nailed, put in some nails just to, for extra measure to hold it in place, but then I'm gonna take it eventually and run it through the saw to trim it up, just to make sure I got all the sides completely even and square. I put the ends on it as well and uh, I use that bar clamp I've got there. It's basically a straight edge fence bar clamp thing that I bought at Harbor Freight. And I let it set overnight and got it all in place. Now I'm getting ready to put the T-Track in. And uh, I'm just measuring down the middle of the tube there. And getting my T-Track measured out. And then I'm going to take my temporary fence there. And measure how deep I want to go on the T-Track into that top of that, that tube. And I don't have a dado blade. Uh, so... I'm just going to do it the, the long way, which is I'm going to run that board or run that tube across that blade um, in several passes, incrementally moving that, that straight edge along until I get, I get all of the material removed so where the T-Track is going to go. Takes a little bit of time, but it actually works. And uh, you know, this Ryobi fence I keep changing the way I'm saying it. I think they prefer Ryobi. I think everybody says Ryobi, but whatever. Ryobi, not Ryobi. Ryobi, as that guy says on the other YouTube channel. Um, but uh, take all the material out. The Ryobi doesn't have a, uh, this this particular one will not allow you to use a dado blade. So you have to do it that way. And then, then I just take a chisel and, and pull out any excess material that's in the way there. It worked out really well. I was able to take it and put that heat track in there. Really nice. There you go. All right, so then I'm going to skin it. I want to put uh, foam mic on it, just like I've got everywhere else on my on my bench there or my cart. So, you know, the process, put some contact cement on the MDF, and put some contact cement on the back of the Formica, and wait for it to get uh, dry. Uh, you'd let it dry, so it's probably about 15 minutes, I guess, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, once it's all set, I take some dry pieces of lumber and I place on top of there so that I can place my Formica over, over the piece that I want to apply it to and then I slowly pull it out and press it down there with my roller and then I take my trim router and I trim it out. Be careful in this step once you trim that Formica it's very sharp and can cut you. 
becomes razor sharp. Uh, I just would go back right after I trimmed this and I'd put a little chamfer on it, a tiny bit, just to kind of take the edge off that Formica. You can see Formica leaves a lot of dust behind. Yeah, here I just take some sandpaper and just kind of knock down the edge. T-track in it, pieces together, those will be the side pieces, so I'm going to take and round the edges off, I'm round the corners off, top, top corners off on the front and back, and I'll just uh, clamp them together there, take my sander, and just smooth them off so that they'll be um, the same. Now I'm going to put a T-track into the side of this side for the for the fence. Um, so I'm doing the same bit I did on the top. I'm just going to take it and run that plank through several times, incrementally changing that fence until I get the, all the material removed for the for the T-track. Little by little, you know, basically an eighth of an inch at a time. Run it through several increments until it until that T-track fits in. There. And there you go. It fits right in there. I put a little glue in there. Screw it in place. Uh, but first, we're going to put some formica on that. Formica on the sides as well. Same process. Contact some men on the MDFs, contact some men on the formica, wait for it to dry, and then press it down. Put it along the edge too on these sideboards. So just uh, put it on the bottom and the top. Along the edge. Sorry, only on the bottom. I did it at the bottom because I want it to be a nice smooth uh, ride. So that Formica is really slick and smooth. And trim it out. Be careful that trim router, for whatever reason, as I was doing this bit right here, I got that trim router in kind of a little bit of an angle and it took off some of the Vermica there at the edge but it's okay can't see it very much uh, but I know it's there so you can see here I was just kind of demonstrating how easy this Vermica is to clean off I just uh, you know I got some contact cement on it some wood glue all over it some sand sawdust and everything and I just took a little acetone wiped it right up that's why I like the Vermica all right so I glued that t-track in on the top put the screws in um, and that worked great. Gluing up the sides here. Gonna put those in place. Clamped it. Get that one set. I set one side first, and then I set the other side. And here I'm cutting out the notch for the magnifying piece that's uh, going to go over the measuring tape that's going to sit on that side rail, sit on that track. So I just cut it, cut out the notch. It's about two inches by one inch. The magnifying piece uh, is one inch wide. So I just cut it off, and here it is. I'm going to. So now I'm taking some carpet tape, some really strong carpet tape, putting it on that teeth. That T-square basically is what this is, and I got that. That I've clamped the fence to the blade so that I could keep that fence straight and square. 
and then I just pushed it down onto that carpet tape and flipped over this fence so that I could keep it in place and then put the screws in. Countersink the screws. I also, you can see I've got some uh, of that HDPE, is that really slick plastic. Uh, I just made a couple of runners and put on the bottom of that T-square. Inside them just a little bit. Gives it a nice slick, smooth surface to slide on when you move the teeth when you move the fence. Here I'm drilling in some holes under the end of the tube, and I put some threaded inserts in there so that I could put that toggle clamp into it. And then I have a square end on the other side, basically a stop block um, that has a couple of knobs that I can tighten down and move up and down those two short seven inch pieces of T-Track that I've got in there. So I'm laying down the uh, measuring tape here on that aluminum track. Worked out really great. Just cut it off with a knife and it worked. All right, well, that's all for the build. Um, it didn't take as long, of course, because it's just a fence. Um, so the video is much shorter than last time. And I, if you if you watched the whole video last time, I really appreciate that. I really, really appreciate you um, watching this video. And also, please subscribe. Um, help my channel grow. Subscribe and share. Share it with your friends and, and give me a thumbs up on this video if you like this build, if you like this fence. Um, and uh, I do plan in the future uh, putting out some of the plans. I've, as I said before in my first video, I did create all of these in SketchUp. So it's just a, a matter of time before I can get these into plans that I can offer for you guys. Uh, but again, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And you can watch my other videos. Um, we're only, this is like number, uh, this is number four. So uh, next, next video is we're going to be putting the router into this flip top. I haven't decided yet if we'll get the lift create it as well, or we'll do that in a separate video, but we'll see. Uh, but the main thing is I want to get the, the router into it, uh, the table, into the table. And so I've got a plate for that and uh, really appreciate it. Uh, again, thank you so much. Have a nice week. God bless you.